Hey guys, what is up? My name is Nicholas Hill and I'm currently a core anaesthetic trainee in the Glasgow Royal Infirmary in Scotland. And in today's video, we will be taking a deep dive into anaesthesia equipment, and specifically airway devices. So it doesn't matter if you're in a medical profession, a medical student, or someone just simply curious about the tools that we use. I hope you stick around to find out more. Let's get right into it. So let's start off with the most simple airway device, which is the face mask. It is a device which I use every day before I drift my patients off to sleep. As you can see here, it's made of a transparent plastic so that if there's any vomit or secretions into the mask, we can actually visually see it. So some face masks actually comes flavored, for example, strawberry flavor, but this mask in particular smells like Play-Doh for some reason. Now, the reason why we put on a face mask on our patients before we drift them off to sleep is so that we can pre-oxygenate their lungs with a 100% oxygen as compared to the 21% which are breathing in room air now in preparation of putting it off to sleep. So next up, what we have here is called a Goodell airway, also known as an oropharyngeal airway. It's basically a curved plastic tube which is inserted into the mouth and helps to keep a patent or an open airway in unconscious patients. Now, this is a really important device because what it does is it prevents the tongue from flopping backwards, potentially obstructing the airway, and allows us to improve oxygen delivery into your lungs whenever you're asleep. Now, inserting a Goodell airway requires skill and training. It must be properly sized to be effective in what it does. And one way to size it is to measuring a patient's incisors all the way down to the angle of the mandible, just like this. The correct way to insert a Goodell airway is firstly insert it into the mouth with the angle facing towards the heart palate and then rotating it 180 degrees, advancing in until the incisors reaches the bite block up here. Now, I would only insert the Goodell airway into my patients when I know that they're asleep and has a depressed gap reflex to mitigate the risk of spasming of the muscles in the larynx or even some vomit if the patient's not fasted. Next, let's have a look at supraglottic airway devices. These devices sit above your vocal cords and allow us to improve oxygen delivery and also maintain a working airway during your surgery. Now, superglottic airway devices are sometimes preferred over a tube which goes into your windpipe because firstly, it's less invasive, it's easier to insert and requires less skill and training. Now, let's start off with the LMA, also known as the laryngeal mass airway. It consists of several components, one of which includes the breathing tube itself, the mask, and also a connector port at the end to inflate the mask after you insert it into the patient. Now, the reason why this is called a laryngeal mask airway, as the term suggests, it stays in the larynx. It looks like a little mask, and when inflated, it creates a tight seal around the area above your vocal cords and allows us to deliver anesthetic gas and oxygen into your lungs whenever you're sleep for a surgery. Next, what we have here is the eye gel airway device. It is known as a second generation superglottic airway device made and designed to improve on the previous LMA which I've shown you earlier. Now the first thing that you'll notice when handling an eye gel is that it doesn't have an inflatable cuff. Now the cuff is apparently made of medical grade soft thermoplastic material which apparently molds into the shape of your larynx with time and heat so there isn't a need to inflate any air into it to create a tight seal. Now the second thing that the eye gel has which the LMA doesn't is a bite block in place which prevents the occlusion of the tube whenever patients bite on it. Now if you look at the LMA here if a patient were to bite it really, really tight, you can see that the tube is completely occluded and it actually prevents oxygen delivery into our patient's lungs. Now, we compare that with the eye gel. You can see there's a thick block of plastic here and no matter how hard I bend, I can't occlude the tube in as compared to here. And this bit of plastic sits at the patient's mouth. So biting it doesn't occlude the tube. And the last thing that the eye gel has which the LMA doesn't as a presence of a gastric suction port. As you can see here, I've inserted a tube into the gastric suction port and it exits at the bottom here. So you can actually insert it into the stomach and start sucking up stomach contents if the patient's actively vomiting. And lastly, the eye gel and the LMA come in different sizes. 
to fit different types of patients and different types of airway as you need them. Now, these superglottic airway devices, when used rightly, can be effective in ventilating our patients whenever they are asleep. However, they do not offer absolute protection to aspiration from gastric contents. So if we have a patient who's actively vomiting, there is a risk that all these gastric contents can go into the lungs, causing damage, infection, and also potentially airway compromise, which is a potentially dangerous and fatal scenario. And that brings us to the use of ET tubes, also known as endotracheal tubes, that helps us to secure and maintain our patient's airway and protect them from aspirating events. Now, the difference between inserting an ET tube as compared to a supraglottic airway devices is that these tubes actually go into the vocal cords and stays in your windpipe with the help of laryngoscopy to visualize the vocal cords, which we will be discussing in another video. Now, there are different sizes of endotracheal tubes, and the one that I have here is a size 8 tube, which basically means that the internal diameter of this tube is 8 millimeters wide. Now, ET tubes can come cuffed or uncuffed. What cuff means is the presence of the balloon here. So when inserted into the vocal cords, we can actually inflate the balloon, which actually protects any gastric contents from going into your lungs to help the balloon here. Now, there are also markings at the side of the tube here, as you can see, in centimeters, and that allows us to keep track on how deep the tube is when we intubate our patients. This is really important because sometimes when we move patients while they are asleep and the tube is in place, the tube can actually migrate too shallow or too deep. So taking a, being aware of where the tube is when we initially insert it can help us make little adjustments as needed if we feel like the tube is too shallow or too deep. Now the last interesting component of an ET tube is the presence of what we call a Murphy's eye as you can see here. So most of the time, gas would just exit out the bevel of the tube. But on rare occasions, it could be occluded by secretions or basically sitting on the wall of the windpipe. And this little hole here allows an alternative escape for gas and also oxygen delivery whenever you're asleep. Right guys, I hope that you found this video informative and helpful. Understanding anesthesia equipment is really important for us because it allows us to use the right equipment to deliver high quality and safe care for our patients whenever they are asleep. If you like what I do, please give a like and subscribe. If not, if you have anything you want to ask me, leave it down in the comment section below. See you then.